the Roadrunners, who was UTSA? We haven't talked about that this week. Injury updates, who's going to play, who's not going to play, and Kane or Keys. It's your Tennessee UTSA preview right here on a Friday, Locked on Balls. You are Locked on Balls, your daily podcast on the Tennessee Volunteers. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Good Friday morning, everybody. Welcome into it. This is Locked On Vols. It is your team every single day. We're a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you so much, you everydayers, for making Locked On Vols your first listen. Uh, today's episode is brought to you in part by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can be like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College. Terms and conditions do apply. Wow, that is quite quite the little thing i have to say at the top of this episode that is quite the read there a uh, good thing we're blowing past it and i'm uh going ahead and commenting on it wasting even more time but hey appreciate you guys for being here uh tomorrow game day uh super thrilled to uh see you know college football again you know we wait all year long we wait all year long for just a couple of saturdays and another one is here in tennessee of course needs to bounce back and needs to bounce back in a major major way need to get some momentum uh, kind of rolling on into what is now a massive game against South Carolina next week in Neyland Stadium. But first of all, first things first, you got to take care of UTSA. Who are the Roadrunners? That's coming up in segment number two. My keys to the game. And then, uh, but right now, what Josh Heupel said at his Thursday press conference. And again, Thursday press conferences, you know how I feel about those. Completely and utterly pointless. Um, he doesn't say anything, hardly at all. Of course, you know, last Thursday he said that Cooper Mays was essentially going to play. And he didn't, so that was kind of kind of bizarre. But you've got to ask these questions. Uh, Josh Heupel did comment when asked the question in Thursday's press conference about the availability of Gerald Mincy and about the availability of Cooper Mays. First Mincy, then Mays. Here's what Josh Heupel said on Thursday. Yeah, Gerald's been with us uh, all week long. He'll he'll play on on Saturday. Uh, Coop's been with us all week long too. Uh, he was last week. Uh, at the end of the day, he's a little bit of a, a game time decision. Uh, it's it's kind of based on how he's feeling um, at that point. So Gerald Mincy's going to play, um, and that's good because I think Gerald Mincy's your best option at right tackle. Now they they still might split those routes between he and JJ Crawford, just like they did last year on the left side uh, between those two players. But I think Gerald Mincy's your best option at right tackle. So that's good to see. Good to hear. Of course, he was cited for simple possession last week, Thursday night. The real issue was um, he was out after curfew. You know, that was the issue. And so, anyway, uh, he played special teams, PAT team, but uh, field goal team, but he did not play any offense. But it sounds like he's going to be playing his offense. And then we'll see Cooper Mays, man. I mean, again, he's been close. Um, I didn't think he was going to play much, if at all, last week. Um, we'll see about this week. Do they want to give him yet another week of doing nothing in terms of playing and then get him ready for South Carolina, or do you dip your toes in the water if you can this week and then really get going for South Carolina? I don't know the answer to that. Um, he's been you know dressed out in full pads, ready to roll the last two weeks, but he hasn't played. And so um, or two weeks ago, he was never going to play. Last week, I thought there was a chance. Uh, we'll see about Cooper Mays, but this offensive line needs it needs their center back in a hurry, that is for sure. Um, difficulty on preparing for two quarterbacks. I'll get into more about why UTA, UTSA uh, could potentially have two starting quarterbacks in this game. Why Tennessee's got to prepare for them. The situation's around that, but Josh Heupel on preparing for potentially two quarterbacks um, against UTSA. Um, they're a little bit different. Uh, and end of the day, you got to prepare for uh, for both of them. Um, at the end of the day, it's it's a lot about us though too. Uh, you know the things that uh, that showed up last week. Uh, we got to be uh, disciplined and and um, and then go make plays, and that comes down to winning one-on-one -on -one situations. I kind of ran into that one there. There won't be two guys play. I mean, unless injury. But the point is, you're either going to have your starter in Frank Harris, and I'll tell you all about him in segment two, or you'll have the backup in um, Eddie Eddie Lee Marburger if Frank Harris can't go, but. Uh, don't know which one's going to be right now, so you got to train and prepare for both. Uh, speaking of one quarterback or two quarterbacks, let's go to the other side and, and Tennessee's quarterback and Joe Milton. Uh, Josh Heupel gave a pretty good answer here. Ask about how do you kind of keep Joe's confidence up or keep believing in him with a lot of outside noise. People like me, uh, you know, writers and, and podcasters and, and radio guys, you know, maybe being a little critical, um, and of course, fans being critical 
of Joe Milton. Uh, kind of how do you deal with that as a head coach to keep your quarterback engaged? Yeah, nobody was ever critical of me when I was playing quarterback, so I didn't have to you know, deal with that situation. Uh, listen, uh, and it's for everybody in the building, right? If you, uh, if you think your value is based off of outside opinion when it's going well or when it hasn't gone as well as you would like it to, you're putting yourself in – a situation to be up and down. Be consistent in your preparation. Uh, you got to plan for those guys every single week. Be into your routine. Doesn't ensure that you're going to play perfect. Uh, it's hard in this game to, to do that. Uh, you got 11 guys on the other side of the football. You got strategy from the coaches. Um, <clears throat> at the end of the day, you prepare the best you can to put yourself in the position to go play your best. Um, Joe's got things that he can do better, but the guys around him got to do things better too. And at the end of the day, if you know, you're in second and 20 all day. It makes things real difficult. So um, offensively, um, we got to control the controllables. You can't have a bunch of self-inflicted wounds. You got to play smart football. Uh, you do that, you give yourself a chance to, uh, to move the football and score points. So we're saying kind of what we've been saying all week long. Like, yeah, Joe's got to play better. I mean, there, there's nobody saying that Joe has arrived or Joe's perfect or Joe's not uh, you know, the complete issue. And anybody saying that, um, it's kind of foolish, in my opinion. Joe's got to play better, but the guys around him really got to pick it up. Um, it, it's that it's that whole thing. Um, it's again, it's that um, it's that whole operation that's not very good right now. Yet Joe's still making the right decision. Somebody commented on the show yesterday and said, "Pick one or the other. Either Joe sucks, or the or the operation sucks, or you know Joe's making the right decision. It can't be both. Yeah, it can absolutely be both. Watch the tape. I mean, Joe Milton is not for the most part." Again, I know he got clobbered through an interception, then there was one pass against Virginia. But for the most part, Joe's made the right decisions. He's not putting the ball in harm's way. That's completely different than the operation. And you can make the case, like, hey, snap the football. I hear you. A lot of that, though, is on the sideline. You know, communicate and check with me. I mean, the whole thing is just bad. So, again, it's it's two separate things there. But it's both got to get better. Both got to get better in a hurry. Um, that was Josh Heupel, some of the best from Josh Heupel in a Thursday press conference. Tennessee and UTSA coming up at 4 o'clock. Uh, that will be on Saturday, and we'll break it all down on a postcast early Sunday morning right here on Locked On Balls. Uh, when we come back, I'll tell you all about UTSA, Frank Harris, the quarterback. If it's not Frank Harris, who's it going to be? All that and more before Kaner Keys in segment number three right here on Locked On Balls. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have the right access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people faster and for free. Simple tools like screening questions allow you to interview the right people and find the right people that you can trust and who are qualified to take care of that small business that you work so hard to achieve. But hey, you can't do it all, and you don't want to just hand it over to somebody uh, that, that isn't qualified or that you trust. You can find those with those tools, those people to interview and then hire over at LinkedIn Jobs. That's why small businesses write LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus its leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster and for free. Post your job for free. Is at LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. To post your job for free, terms and conditions do apply. That's LinkedIn Jobs. And I want to say about a, a new sponsor of the show. Really excited about it. That is DoorDash. DoorDash. Uh, love the convenience of getting what you want right to your door. With DoorDash Grocery Delivery, you can stock up on the week or last-minute cravings conveniently. Burnt your last piece of toast. Avocado has gone bad. Let me try that again. Avocado, not avocado. Avocado's gone bad or the hot sauce bottle is empty. Try grocery delivery with DoorDash. But you can also go ahead and get meals from restaurants. Uh, you can get groceries, all that and more with your friends and friendly uh, neighbors over at DoorDash. Listen, my, my schedule is packed to the brim. I've got a lot going on right now, especially during the day. Wife's at work. Um, I, you know, I'm running from, you know, here from campus and all that type of stuff. Going out to West Knoxville. Uh, to do some TV stuff and, and all that. Um, and, and sometimes I just need something really, really quick. But you know, also you want to you eat as a little healthy. What I do a lot throughout the week, you know, maybe three or four times, um, you know, maybe that's an exaggeration, probably about two or three times, is I'll door dash, you know, a salad from somewhere. And I'll get it. I'll have it ready for me whenever I get home. I'll eat and then I'll go back to work. It's really convenient and it saves me a lot of time. And I mean, if, if you wanted a burger, if you wanted wings, if you wanted whatever, you can do that with DoorDash too. It's it's really, really convenient to help the hardworking people who are busy like myself and like you maybe as well 
get on with your day, but also with the family, dinner time. You don't want to cook dinner at night? <laughs> Just DoorDash it. Uh, great, great stuff, making it convenient, plus the quality is incredible. Get 50% off your first DoorDash order and up to $20 value when you use the promo code Locked On College at checkout. Limited time offer, terms apply. That's 50% off, up to $20, no minimum subtotal, and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter that promo code Locked On College. Don't forget that code is Locked On College, 50% off your first order with DoorDash. Hey guys, I want to remind you about uh, something really, really cool that we're doing here on the Locked On Podcast Network, and it's every single Friday. So this is your first listen, depending on what time you're listening. Uh, you can catch it live or you can go back and watch it as well. But every single Friday, uh, it's going to be the Locked On College Football Live. It's going to be 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Time on every Locked On College YouTube channel. College Football Kickoff Live will cover playoff implications, the conference rivalry games in depth like only Locked On can that includes insight analysis from our stable of Locked On College hosts covering their team every day, people like me. Find Locked On College football kickoff every Friday, live 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. on every Locked On College YouTube channel. You don't want to miss it. We promise you that. All right, so you can listen to that live or you can go back and check it out. It's going to be on the YouTube channel. They will podcast the audio version as well. I'm on the audio feed, so go ahead and check that out. Uh, we spend so much time talking about Tennessee. We spend so much time talking about the Florida loss that we really have not turned our attention to UTSA, or at least you know got a scout on them so far. And, th and that's what I'm going to do here uh, in this game before I give you my keys in segment three, and we're out the door. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll wait and give you my keys, but you know, in, in terms of how you need to attack UTSA, but this is who UTSA is. First of all, it's a university. <laughs> Try that again. First of all, is the University of Texas at San Antonio. I'm going to refer to UTSA as the University of Texas at San Antonio as much as I can tomorrow. <laughs> Am I writing? Am I tweeting? And all that and more. Uh, this will be the first time meeting ever between the two squads. Uh, it's a really good squad. At least it's been in recent memory. Back-to-back -back conference championships in Conference USA. It has since switched to the American Athletic Conference. Last year, it went 11-3. and three. The last two years entering this season, it had won 23 games. That program's been rolling for head coach Jeff Trailer uh, in his fourth season. And I don't know how much you guys have kept up with Jeff Trailer and UTSA this week in preparation for Tennessee, but boy, he is a walking soundbite, that head coach. He has given a lot of good soundbites this week, <laughs> just in general, that being Jeff uh, Trailer. So um, last year, the offense is one of the best in the country. Uh, it was 14th in the nation with 36.8 points per game. It was 12th in total offense at 476 yards per game. Uh, offensive coordinator got a promotion. He left. He went to Oregon. Uh, new offensive coordinator is Jason Burke, and he was the special teams coordinator a season ago. Um, we'll get to Frank Harris in a moment, but he's the seventh-year quarterback. The offense primarily returns everybody, four starting offensive linemen, Frank Harris at quarterback. It does say goodbye to one of its best receivers, and that is... Zachariah Franklin, who had 11 touchdowns a season ago, he transferred to Ole Miss after the end of spring practice. Uh, defense as well was pretty solid last year, too. 25 points per game, only giving up 387 yards per game. The defense returned seven starters, and uh, we'll get to that in a moment. Back to that offense, and back to starting quarterback in Frank Harris. It is going to be a game-time decision. That is what Jeff Trailer said Wednesday night, I believe, at his radio show. A game-time decision for Frank Harris, dealing with turf toe. He did not play last week. Turf toe is a thing that does not go away until you rest it. And so it, it leads me to believe that he's not going to play on Saturday. We'll see, but he did not play against Army. He has numerous knee surgeries, uh, contemplated medically retiring over the offseason. In fact, I think that was his plan at one point in time. Uh, Frank Harris somehow has seven years of eligibility or seven years in college. This is his seventh year. And in his career so far, get this, entering the season, he threw for over 9,000 yards in his career, a combined 100 touchdowns, 76 of those through the air. Uh, last year alone, he had 32 passing touchdowns and over 4,000 yards passing. He's good. He's really good. And last week, without Frank Harris at quarterback, and it was more of a defensive effort, um, that that was horrible. Army, you know, scored nearly 40 points on him, and uh, Army took down UTSA. It wasn't good. Frank Harris did not play last week, uh, but even to start the season, Frank Harris hasn't been Frank Harris, if you will. Um, in that close loss to Houston, uh, he threw three interceptions. He's completing only 60% of his passes. Still has over 400 yards passing in two games, 423 
which is you know pretty solid. Uh, two touchdowns in two games, but again, those three interceptions against Houston last week in his absence, um, it wasn't bad from a from a statistical perspective. Eddie Lee Marburger, twenty or two games. Uh, he played a little bit in the uh, in the uh, win over Texas State, seventeen to twenty six, sixty five percent, two hundred thirty nine yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions for Eddie Lee Marburger. Uh, you want to feel old right now? Josh McCown's son, Owen McCown, is also a quarterback on roster. Um, how about that? So that's the quarterback situation. Um, obviously, they need their guy. They need Frank Harris. He's going to be a game time decision. He missed last week with turf toe. Quite frankly, I'm not. I'm not pretending to be an insider on UTSA, but uh, just knowing that injury, I'd be surprised if he plays on Saturday. Look at the running back position. Cavante Barnes, 51 attempts on the season, 245 yards, a touchdown. He's averaging nearly five yards per carry. At wide receiver, you did lose your star player from last year, but you return a lot. Joshua Sepsis out of the slot. It's a really good player. Uh, 24 receptions, 247 yards, and two touchdowns in three games. He had six touchdowns in 2022. How about the, try this one off for size, you locals out there in the Alcoa area? Tyke Ogle Kellogg, 10 receptions, 140 yards, and a touchdown so far this season. That touchdown came last week against Army. I believe it was a Hail Mary before the end of the half. Anyway, Tyke uh, Ogle Kellogg, an Alcoa tornado. That's pretty neat. A um, couple of tight ends they use, but overall in three games, the offense has lacked the explosion. The offense has lacked the the firepower, if you will, that we're used to seeing from a UTSA team, at least the last couple of years. 21 points per game, 383 yards on average in three games. Uh, they've thrown it for 220 yards, run it for 162. They've had five turnovers and allowed seven sacks. Uh, you hope that that keeps up. Um, obviously heading into Neyland Stadium. They're one and two on the year, mind you. Uh, almost almost beat Houston week one, beat Texas State, lost to Army last week. Let's flip the script, go to defense. Defense last year was pretty solid as well, and I mentioned they returned seven starters. Um, been pretty solid so far to begin this year. 22 points per game is, is all that it's allowed on average, 339 yards of total offense. That's pretty good. It's been stout through the ground, 128 yards on the ground allowed. Um it's got 10 sacks, but much like Tennessee's defense that has one turnover four so far in three games, UTSA's defense, though it's been solid, hasn't caused a turnover yet. Um, and, and that's something that's going to be a key for, for Tennessee here in segment number three. You got to go get the freaking football, right? Um, you know, there's some names here. They're multiple front and all that type of stuff. But the name that you need to remember, uh, the name that can create some challenges and the name that will be a good test for Tennessee off the edge is Trey Moore. Trey Moore has an elite elite stat line. Last year, he had eight sacks and 18 TFLs from that Leo position, uh, that end man on line scrimmage position. So far this year in three games, 15 tackles, four sacks. He's halfway to a sack total a season ago, and five TFLs. He's a really good player. Spoke with Joey Halsley for the uh, Vault Network interview um, earlier in the week for tomorrow, for Saturday, and um, you know behind the curtain, that's tape. That's not live, if you uh, know what I'm talking about. And he said, hey, he, he considered this guy an elite guy. He's like, hey, he's an elite prospect. He's really, really good. So Trey Moore is the guy you need to look out for. Um, you know, look at the linebacker position. Former Tennessee uh, linebacker Martavis French, part of the Whitehaven Trio. Those that follow Tennessee recruiting know exactly what I'm talking about. Bryce and Eason, Tamarian McDonald, and Martavis French were considered the Whitehaven Trio. Whitehaven High School in Memphis, Tennessee. All three of those guys committed to Tennessee. Two stay, two play, one left. He got in some trouble, that being Martavis French. But he is currently leading UTSA with 17 tackles. You've also got your leading tackler returning and linebacker Jamal Ligon. Um, he's got 10 tackles already this season. Last year he had 90. In the secondary, you uh, return an all-conference USA uh, or actually, he's a defensive lineman. Excuse me. Uh, Braxton Brown is an all-conference uh, conference USA guy up front. Uh, up front as well, Joe Evans comes in. He's a transfer from LSU. You back at linebacker to go along with Martavis French, Jamal Ligon, who's the leading tackler from last year. Martavis French, the leading tackler this year. You also add Nick Troy Fortune, who played three years at West Virginia, and then finally in the back end. Again, not a whole lot of interceptions or no no interceptions, no turnovers forced. But you do have at safety Rashad Wisdom. He's a two-time first-team All-Conference USA safety. Uh, he's probably the guy to look out for in the secondary. So that's UTSA. That's the scout on UTSA. Again, one and two on the year. 
Typically an explosive offense. Haven't seen a whole lot of that to date. And by God, you hope it's not Neyland Stadium tomorrow. That is for sure. I think the biggest uh, thing to be looking out for is the availability of Frank Harris at quarterback. But this should be a game that Tennessee goes and does exactly what it wants to do. Will it? We will find out. That's coming up tomorrow at Neyland Stadium. Hey, when we come back here on Locked On Vols, and conclude a week's worth of shows. Kaner Keys, what needs to happen for Tennessee uh, to get back on track? And um, what could it mean if Tennessee reaches those keys? I'll tell you all that and more here on the other side. What is it about our friends, FanDuel Sportsbook? All right, it's been scrolling on the bottom ticker um, all week long, and I went ahead and updated it here for a Friday show. FanDuel's got... Tennessee as a 20 and a half point favorite, and the total is sitting at 58 and a half, 58 in the hook for Tennessee and UTSA. It's a heavy favorite. It is a three touchdown favorite. You can get in on those odds of FanDuel Sportsbook, but also you can get it on get in on a lot of NFL odds as well. Um, no better place to do it than America's number one sportsbook. That is at FanDuel Sportsbook. Right now, new customers get two hundred dollars in bonus bets guaranteed. When you place a $5 bet over at FanDuel Sportsbook, that's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on all that action. Get in on the spreads. If you're new, I encourage you to do the player props, the totals, overs, unders, and a whole lot more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season in style. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. All right, guys, welcome back into your Friday edition of Locked On Vols. Can't thank you enough for being here. We are about to surpass 9,000 subscribers, maybe by the end of the day, and uh, really, really can't wait for that to happen. And I owe it all to you guys, Locked On Vols, for uh, doing what I said, doing what I asked, not what I say. Okay, this is not a cult. (laughs) We joked with Boogie about it on yesterday's show. Um, Doing what I ask, and I can't thank you enough for that, uh, for going to subscribe. And even if you don't really partake in a lot of YouTube stuff. A subscription helps. And that's the same for Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, Stitcher, Odyssey, wherever you listen to your podcast to. Uh, a subscription, a follow, um, a, a rate with five stars, leave me, leaving me a comment on uh, Apple Podcasts. All that helps so much. It just gets this show in front of more Tennessee fans. So I uh, can't thank you for that. And it allows me to make a living. So really, I thank you so much. Um, here are my caner keys for Tennessee and UTSA. It's going to be a shorter segment. Um, you know, we barked and talked and and we've gone to church a lot this week about the Florida loss and, and what went wrong, what needs to happen. Um, there's a lot that needs to happen. I mean, at the end of the day, though, this is a game where and, and it kind of stinks because it kind of stinks because it's a lose lose if you look at it. Tennessee wins by 50. Oh, well, it's just UTSA. Tennessee wins 30-13 to 13 like it did against Austin P. Well, golly, might as well chuck that up as a loss. Everything was horrible. And so it's kind of in that mindset to where even if you go out there and you just blow the, the doors off UTSA, it's like, well, we saw what they did against role competition in Florida. Well, let's just wait till next week. And that is completely fair. I'm not saying you're wrong in that regard if that's how you think. Um, but I try to remind myself that, you know, we as – media we is but i mean like i'm a fan i love football i am a fan i love college football i grew up watching tennessee i went to neyland stadium with my dad growing up okay i have these these memories and this fondness okay the end of the day even us in the media we are sports fans that's why we got into this industry you only get 12 of these guaranteed a year and yeah sure a bowl game will come and all that type of stuff but you only get 12 of these guaranteed a year and and i'm trying to remind myself and i would encourage if you're you know, if you're in this line of thinking as well about, oh, well, UTSA, who cares? Da, da, da. You only get 12. And so I encourage you to kind of go in it with that mindset. And yeah, South Carolina is going to be there next week, regardless of what happens tomorrow, regardless of how, you know, Tennessee looks. Um, but you only get 12. And so I'm trying to remind myself of that for sure. So um, my keys here are a couple. Number one, be the bully. Be the bully. I'm going to write these down because, I, you know, if I was good at show prepping, I would have already done that. Be the bully. This is a game to where Austin P is not nearly as good as UTSA, but in both of those games, Tennessee should have went out there and done whatever Tennessee wanted to do. It couldn't really accomplish that as much as it needed to against Austin P. Right the wrongs. Go in there and, and be the freaking bully. Offensive line, <laughs> go out there and run for over 200 yards. You know, O line's got to respond more on that in a moment. Olan's got to respond. Go out there and run the football, whatever you want. I mean, Tennessee, if you want to go and go for it on fourth and five, go for it on fourth and five and convert. Puff your chest out a little bit. Score 50 points. Score 50 points. Be 
the freaking bully. Shut him down on third and short. Shut him down on fourth and short defensively. Do what you need to do and be the bully. Get that swagger back a little bit because you're going to need it as you as uh, SEC plays rolls along. My key number two, operation. I mean, Houston, we have a problem. It's the operation of the offense, and we can talk about offensive line and penalties and coaching and quarterback all we want. The, the bottom line is the whole thing sucks. Okay, Last time I'll say this this week, and you've heard me say it already, Tennessee is a tempo offense. You're not running with tempo right now. The last two weeks, 65 and 63 plays. If you take away Tennessee's tempo, what are you? Right now, you're a struggling offensive line with an average quarterback, and that's the truth. Get your tempo back. And what I mean by tempo is get that operation back. Um, you know, coaching, signaling in from the sideline. If you do check with me, sure, do it a little bit. Don't live and check with me. Get the play call, go line up and snap the football and go. That operation needs to be a whole lot better. And against a team like UTSA, you should fine tune it and, and it, it should be looking good. That operation needs to be a whole lot better. Fix the operation. Um, or I guess my key would be execute the operation of the offense. So we got be the bully. We got execute the operation of the offense. Number three, offensive line. This kind of goes along with, with our other two points, but the offensive line needs to have, have a good day. Offensive line, get after it. Go get them. Um, you got drugged through the mud at Florida last weekend. You've been drugged through the mud all week long, myself included. I've been very critical of the offensive line. This is a game where you should go out there and really – really do what you want to do. Set the tone. Be the bully again, like I said. Go run for over 200 yards. Don't allow a sack. Um, you know, depending on who's going to be wearing all this stuff, it doesn't matter. Just go out there and find some cohesiveness and respond the way you need to respond offensive line. You know, you, How big a bully are you? You're going to get challenged this week, and you should get challenged because you got embarrassed, embarrassed by not a very good Florida team, in my opinion. And a lot of that is on the offensive line. Be the bully. Execute the operation. Offensive line, get after it. Let's go to defense, shall we? Defense. <laughs> Run your freaking feet. Run your feet. Don't leave your feet. Run your feet. Why? Because if you run your feet, if you keep your feet, you will make tackles. 11 missed tackles last week. 10 of those from the secondary. Back-to-back -back games with 10-plus missed tackles. What is this? No, that's pathetic. Make the tackles. Run your feet. Run your feet. Run your feet. Run your feet. Uh, Tennessee needs to get off to a good start. Obviously, Tennessee needs to win the mid eight. But my biggest key, maybe in the whole, well, this is probably my second biggest key because the operation needs to get better. Uh, but I'm saving it for last year. Maybe the biggest key or the second biggest key of the game go get the football. Go get the football. Um, I'm writing these down. Sorry, guys. Go get football. One turnover. One turnover defensively in three games. Two overall, one was a muff punt. You have created one turnover in three games. That is not good enough. Not good enough. I don't care if you're not very good. I don't care if the depth's not where you need to be. Whatever, how this season goes, I don't care. But the fact that you've only got one turnover forced in three games is not good. Offense or defensive line needs to get home with four. It did the first two weeks. It did not against SEC play in Florida. Can it get back with a little less competition? Get your mojo back. Get a little swagger back. We'll see. You need to make some tackles. I get it. The secondary needs to play better. I get it. But the fact of the matter is, go get the freaking football because one turnover force in three games is not good enough. Tennessee needs to win this by a lot. I think for the first time this season, Tennessee gets a 50 burger. I think Tennessee responds the right way, gets into the 50s, and then we can turn all of our attention on to South Carolina for the following week. Big game coming up. Huge game. It's not just UTSA. Tennessee should win this one by multiple scores. The line, according to FanDuel, over the FanDuel Sportsbook is at 20 and a half. The total sits at 58 and a half. Tennessee should cover. Tennessee should. But you need to work some kinks out. You need to get that operation fixed. You need to do you. You be you. Tennessee plays Tennessee this Saturday, just like Tennessee played Tennessee against Austin P. Tennessee needs to play Tennessee tomorrow, and Tennessee needs to win, if that makes sense. And then you can move on and start focusing on what is just a, a monster game against South Carolina the following week, but more on that next week. And I encourage you to come in. It's going to be a big time. Already setting up some crossovers. Got some guests lined up for Tennessee and South Carolina. 
But I uh, got to get through tomorrow first. Tennessee UTSA, 4 o'clock at Neyland Stadium. Guys and gals, thank you so much for being here. Couldn't do this show without you. I swear, couldn't do this without you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your time. It's not just lip service. It means an awful lot. You allow me to do this and uh, do this for a living, and I thank you so much for that. Let's see what Tennessee looks like this weekend. If you're going to the game, stay safe. Have a blast. I will have some type of post-podcast or post-game podcast either super late on Saturday or early Sunday morning. That is my plan, guys. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, and uh, we'll talk again after the game. This is Locked on Balls.